Hi, you guys. It's Lisa. I cannot believe this, but you're in for a treat. We're actually going to create together today. Can you believe it? I don't think I've done a video where I've actually taken the time to create with you um, for a project, and I am super, super excited about it. So I don't want this to go too long. Um, we're going to create a double page in my art journal, and the art journal I am working in looks like, where's my cover? Oh, I don't know. Oh, looks like this. So this is my journal. If you want to see how to do it, I can let you know. Um, it's super nice because it opens all the way flat. As you can see, my pages are all the way flat. And if you want to know how to make this journal, let me know in the comments below, and I'll go ahead and link that also. I want to get started, and um, if it doesn't go too long at the end, I will let you know about some wonderful books and some articles that you must see and read if I have time at the end. And before that, I have super great news about Shay Greg Alley. Uh, Center for the Arts. I'm going to be teaching there in um, July this summer. If you look on page 32, nope, not 32, sorry, page 30, I'm up in the corner here. Yeah, I'm going to do this concertina journal, Gardening for the Soul, which was um, in one of the summer Somerset Studio magazines. I think it was in the Art Journaling magazine, so super great news about that. I'll leave a link below if you want to sign up. It would be wonderful. It's a two-day course. Okay, enough of that. So, blank page. Oh, I hate the blank page, okay? What we're going to do is <clears throat> fast forward to I already started on this page. I'm going to get my journal to lay flat, and I'll tell you what I did. I was watching a video the other day um, by the Creative Cope, and I will link that below. And she showed me this technique, and I have to try it. We're going to go from there. So what I did is I took just regular collage paper and a glue stick, and I glued it down in my book. And then I went for a walk. Okay, so it's all dry. Now what you do, I'll set this aside. I got a whole tray of supplies over here that we're going to use. So um, what we're going to do now is just go ahead and peel. She showed us how to peel this paper off so that we we'll just have bits and scraps. Okay, you can see how I'm doing it. A lot of mine is coming off, but um, I guess it just depends on what kind of glue you use and how long you let it dry. And uh, maybe the texture of the paper. This uh, wallpaper obviously isn't working super hot. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause this and I'm going to come back. I'm going to try and make this video as short as I can so we can get to as much creating as we can. Okay? Be right back. All right. Here's what we got. Here's our scraps. Of course, you know me. I'm not going to throw these away yet. Because you never know, I might think, oh, I wanted something out of there. I'm going to set it aside, though, get it off our desk. And now uh, when I was pulling these papers, of course, I had to read a little bit of the words that were coming off. Imperfect. Imperfect. And impredictable. So I'm going to keep these. And something else that fell out of my journal while I was getting ready to find a page don't let your dreams be dreams. So this may be my sentiment. Something like this is talking to me. So I'm going to keep those, set them aside, okay? Gives us a little more room. What I got here is I got some water. I got a wet rag. I got a palette. And on here I put some white, some cream, and some Van Dyke Brown paint on here. We're going to use possibly a spray bottle. And we're going to just grunge this all up. <clears throat> and also, we're going to use some of these spray stains. I have a ton, I mean a ton, of spray stains. And so I'm going to try and incorporate them in my um, journal classes because I want to use them up. I want to um, maybe get down to maybe 
20 of my favorite colors. I bet you I have maybe 50. So I want to use them, use them so that I know what I like. So I'm going to shake these while I'm thinking. And here's my thought for this page. You have to have some kind of thought, right? So my thought is we're going to put a grungy background that I saw on Creative Cove. Again, I'll link, I'll link her um, video. And then we're going to um, put like a focal point in. Bef uh, at this point, I think we'll put the focal point in right away so that the background isn't too separate from the focal point. When I was on vacation, I grabbed this postcard because I was in Florida. Everybody loves flamingos. But I actually got to tour this guy's um, art studio. He's a marine artist. His name is Steve Doisy, D-I-O-S-S-Y. And if you go on stevedoisy.com, I'll link his information below. He had the coolest stuff in his shop. And here's pictures of all of his, not all, but some of his work. Okay, so I'll link that. So one of the things that I really, really loved was this flamingo. If you can see, it's super cool. It's super fun. It's got a, a martini glass. I don't know. It's just fun. So I wanted to kind of go fun style of this flamingo. We'll see. You know, it was just an idea. We'll see. Might bunch the whole idea in the end, but I just wanted to show his work. Here's another piece. Here's a big bass drinking a beer. And then there was one that my girlfriend Nikki liked. It's a mermaid um, sitting on the moon and there is a little mermaid's tail in the water. So super great art. Obviously I'm not going to copy him, but I was inspired by his work to maybe try and make something fun for this art journal, okay? And we're going to do it as line art. I've been practicing in my journals with in this line art idea. Um, it could be contour drawing, but I do lift my pen and I do uh, a lot of scribbling. So I'm just going to call it line art or scribble art is kind of what I've been uh, working on in this journal. So I want to go along that same um, idea when I do my flamingo in these styles, okay? Let's see what happens. I got a piece of mixed media paper here. I'm going to try on here. I'm going to do this kind of off camera so it's less um, stressful and maybe I'll get a better result. I am going to use um, a permanent marker. I'm going to use a point, a 0 0.5 and this one is also a 0 0.5. Um, I'm going to draw the, draw the focal hopefully and then we'll uh, put it down together. Then we'll do the background. Then we'll add the color. Um, we'll shows it up and do um, some final details. We'll add our sentiment and we'll see where it goes, okay? So um, I'm going to turn up the music and I'm going to let this process go for a bit and um, I'll get back to you. I just think that I create much better like that instead of chatting with you all the time. But if something crazy happens, um, I'll stop, okay, and then I'll say, but enjoy the music, and um, this is how we're going to do it today. All right, thanks, bye. <laughs>
Okay, here's my little love. I'm going to say it's a lady flamingo. I'm going to make it a lady flamingo. And I might even put a little bow in her hair. We'll see. So uh drew it, cut it out with uh, scissors. Now I'm going to take a, a permanent marker. These I get um, at the dollar store. I think two for a dollar, three for a dollar, something like that. And I'm going to go around the cut edge and it's going to make it look like I cut it out perfectly. So, um, I don't care if it's perfect. Remember our little words we found? Imperfect and impredictable, impredictable, imperfect. You know, I don't care. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is an art journal. This is for fun. This is to get my creative juices flowing. I saw a technique on YouTube and I wanted to try it out. And I was thinking flamingos today. So that's what I'm going to do. Today is Valentine's Day, by the way. Happy Valentine's. So um, you're watching this on Saturday, I'm sure. Hope you had a good Valentine's. I am working tonight at a supper club where I live, and hopefully it will be busy with people in love out to eat tonight together, having fun. Okay, so I'm going to quickly do this. We're going to stick it down without coloring it, and when, I, when I'm sticking it down, I'm going to try and be very careful about not getting my glue or my medium on the top of the flamingo because I'm gonna, I, I really think I want to maybe watercolor, maybe it might even need to be marker, but I'm not sure. I don't know yet, so I'm leaving all the possibilities out there, okay? So here's what I thought. Get my background out of the way. Here's what I thought. I'm just going to use glue stick. I'm going to turn it over on this piece of scrap. And I'm going to try and not get it on the front. And I'm going to do it quite liberal because I really want it to stick down. Okay, let's try that. Get rid of that. And, I, and I've been thinking about this the whole time. I don't even, even on my walk, I was thinking, what would this look like? You know, I had an idea about what, what this thing would look like. Now, I've got glue on this side, so I'm going to wipe that off. I do have a towel here. This is my new setup for filming. You'll have to let me know what you think. I have taken over another room in our house. And um, <laughs> let me know what you think about the filming. I need a little more sturdy desk, but that'll come. I'll find it at a rummage sale this spring or at the ReStore. I like to recycle those things. Much better than buying furniture and things on Amazon or having somebody make it for you. I mean, in, unless it was super, super great old antique, I'd take that too. But for right now, it's it's good. So there's our... Flamingo, okay? We've got a lot of room over here now that that flamingo's down. I'm thinking now maybe some tropical plants or something hanging off the edge here. We'll see. I don't want this to be a three-hour video. So let's go forward with our paint. I got water here. Brush. I got a brush. I'm using a beautiful brush, a Princeton Neptune Quill Probably shouldn't be for acrylic paints, but I love the brush and I want to use it. <laughs> so, nah, nah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just go around and if I want to add some water, I'm going to add some water. I'm going to push this background into the background and now it seems really floppy to me. You see that? So I'm going to actually 
wash it up real good and rinse it up real good and I'm going to go and get a different brush and leave the camera going and do the background and then we'll get right back to you okay saving some time here for you Okay, back kind of at the ugly duckling stage here. It's okay. We're going to add some color. Um, what I'm doing is wrapping my book now because I'm going to use these sprays. I'm going to use a lot of water. And I don't want to wreck my pages that I have started here. Not that they're anything special, but who knows? They might get to be something special. This is the front and the back of the book, but... Um, so how I do that, I already did the one side. Now open my page. I'm going to just take some of this. Uh, what kind of paper is this? It is deli paper. I get it at the dollar store. It comes in a roll. Put that there like this so you can see. I'm just folding it folding it and then I'm going to fold it back like this kind of wrapping it just to protect it somewhat and then there I'm going to put these rubber bands on it so I get both sides okay put over this is my page okay so protect it somewhat you know better than it was okay continue on so now we've got these sprays I shook them these are Mr. Huey's Color Mists. I've got Bonnie Bell, Seafoam, Splash, Heirloom Blue, Honeydew, and Clover. Now, my thought today when I was thinking about this on my walk, I was thinking that I wanted some, um, like a teal, teal 
color for the background because the flamingo, of course, is going to be pink. And then I may put heart-shaped bubbles in the background because it's Valentine's Day in red. So that was my idea. Right now I'm looking for my ink and let me run and get it. I like my new setup, but I have to run and get everything because this is a totally different room of where I create normally. I thought it would be easier, but we'll see. So what I'm doing is I have a rubber stamp, and I've taken it off of the big block. Um, I just put it in the microwave and take it off. It's the definition of love. Today's Valentine's Day. Why not? I inked it with archival ink. And now I'm just going to use it in this um, rubber form. And I'm only going um, with the stamp, the writing as horizontal. Okay, I'm not going to go this way and this way. I don't like my pieces like that. If you do, you go right ahead. It doesn't bother me what you do. This is your piece of art. This is your art journal. There is no way in the world that you could have the same piece of um, art journal that someone else did. You freehand something like this. There is no way possible. So I feel like that is enough for me in the background. I'm going to give it a quick dry because we're going to be putting a lot of water and color on here. I'll do it while we're talking. And now, how do I know what these colors look like? Well, because I am such a freak on color swatching, of course, I have swatched all of these colors. So that's how I know what they look like. So I'm going to go and get that, and we'll see it together. So this is how I did that. I took all the colors I had, and you can see I have a ton of spray stains. And I wrote on the back, this is Huey C permanent and I put the colors here so I can flip through and see what I got so this one is Bonnie blue okay so here's heirloom, heirloom, heirloom blue right here that's this one this one is splash that's this one now I really like that green for what I'm thinking so I'm gonna set that aside What's the next one? Sea foam. That's brightening it up, isn't it? So that might be something. Bonnie blue. Ooh, yes, please. And then I got these two green ones here um, that I picked out. Honeydew is right here, this color. And then this one here is clover. Oh, yes. And I must use this a lot because I really, I don't have much left in mine. So I'm going to go with these three for the background. I'm going to set these aside in case we do leaves. And I'm going to get rid of one off my desk. And as long as this too. So let's just go for it. Let's get this background something cool. I'm going to slightly shake them. And I don't really like using the sprays because they never spray for me. And now that I'm saying that, of course, it's going to spray for me perfectly. And as you see, I have a nice, clean, white um, towel here. And I will show you why I have that. I'm wiping off some of that color. Since it's spraying, I'm going to do some more, right? Add some water. Let's not be afraid of it. I just don't want it to get too wet. I want to be able to use... Boy, these are really spraying nicely. And you can see when I spray it, I wipe it on my towel. It had to prove me wrong that sprays never come out, right? 
and then we'll bring this color down here so that we have it all around. I'm trying not to get it on my flamingo there, and I probably should cover that somehow. The flamingo. Let's just go like that if we can. Give us a little reminder that we don't want that all wet. Let's add some of this blue. See how this one's going to spray? This one is Bonnie Blue. Oh yeah, it's going to spray perfectly. Isn't that just crazy? Going to add some water. I'm looking for that cool greenish blue color that I was talking about. I'm using my towel here. Mixing it right on the paper. A little bit more green over here. I am <laughs> loving it. Loving it. Here's that blue. I've got my flamingo covered. Green. Okay, get rid of that maybe. A little water to mix. And obviously I don't want it to be blank right here by my birdie. So I'm going to pull some of this color. I'm going to go right up to it. Move it around with my brush. Because we don't want it to be standing out. That's why we put it there because we didn't want it to stand out from the background, right? We wanted it to stand out to some point, but not, you know, like, oh, I just stuck this bird on here. You want it to be part of it. I love how these sprays worked. That <laughs> really surprised me. I got these at a used craft show, used craft sale. So I couldn't tell you if the company's in business anymore or not, but I definitely will be looking it up, right? Because I'm happy with the product. Really happy. I didn't use this one yet. And I'm getting it on my hands. Not a big deal. I'm wiping it up from my paper here, and I'm using my towel here, as you can see. Okay? And I do have a reason why I'm doing that. Not just to keep a clean surface, but I do have a little reason for that. Let's try this one. This one was the sea foam. Oh, yeah, baby. Really, really loving it. All right, new favorite three colors. Let's keep that moving a little bit around here. Go in between the cute little legs. Finish to the bottom. How am I on camera, okay? This is going to have to dry, of course. There's a lot of paint on here. I'm going to let it dry, and I'll be right back, okay? Take the break. Okay, look at that background. Yummy. It's not completely dry, but while I was drying this and kind of wasting my time drying it, I thought of something. So let's set this aside to dry some more. And look at this great cloth now. I take this cloth and I wet it with my water and let the ink blend together. Okay? And what I do with this, when it's dry, so I let it dry, soak up all this paint, ink, paint, you know, and I'm going to hang it over my chair to dry. That's beautiful. When it dries, 
I rip it into strips and I have beautiful um, dyed texture for um, perhaps bookmark ends, um, something of that nature. So I'm going to go ahead and set that aside, grab my dry one, clean up our area, and then I'm going to go on to some green. And so I'm going to put my blues away for now. Not too far because you never know if you're going to need it. Because inks are better off laying down flat if you store them, just so you know. Okay, so I was thinking about leaves. Here's the mixed media paper that I used for that um, flamingo. Okay, the mixed media paper that was in here. It's a really good weight. Uh, 15 sheets, mixed media paper by Strathmore, um, 400 series, um, it is 184 pound, 6 by 8. So I'm going to use this cover, just because I'm a freak, and I might use these two pieces here too. And what I'm going to do, quickly, not to waste your time, I'm going to add some of this. Clash, just like we did in the beginning. Gonna add some collage down. I'm gonna let it dry again and I'm gonna pull up the edges. And then we're going to add the green sprays with water and we're going to make some green paper that we are going to make into tropical leaves for that left hand side of our art journal page that I was thinking was looking a little too boring. So I know I said that this video was going to be quick and fast and it just isn't. It just isn't going to be. Maybe I'll cut it into two, I don't know, but I'm in a zone, I'm having fun, who cares, right? It's, it's, I was going to say it's Halloween, it's not Halloween, it's Valentine's Day, um, I'm home alone in my new setup for my art journal filming area, i going to give this a quick dry, see if I can rush it along. And we're creating together. So I'm gonna let, I've got to let this dry before I pull it. Speed this up.
Okay, I'm back. I can only do a little bit more and I gotta get ready to go to work. So here's how the leaves looked cut out. I got two of them left, but as you can see over here, I got a whole pile of them done. And so what I did, let me get a piece of scrap paper. After I cut them out, I went around the edges with that big fat black marker. Now I'm taking a fine tip Sharpie and I'm just scribbling the edges like this to give them leaf shape. And then I'm giving them down the center like that. And while I was doing it, a couple of them got wrinkled and I liked that. So I just wrinkled them all. Here's the last one. I just used up that those scrap papers that I had from that cover or from that Fix Media book. You know me, I like to recycle, reuse, repurpose. So here's how our thing is looking. I'm going to paint the flamingo because I just can't leave her like that without any color on her. I'm using some watercolor paints that I have from Marsha's Watercolors. Uh, I got them on Etsy. I want to use this peach color here. I'm going to take it off of this big palette and I'm going to put it on the plastic cover. It's just from a food so that I can give it lots of water and make a real good puddle here. I'm just going to use my spray bottle and get that wet. And I'm going to use my watercolor brush and really um, get some paint from that little palette here. Sorry, my phone's going off. So here we go. We've got some paint here, and I'm hoping that this peach will be the pinkish peach that I'm thinking I want. I'm going to add a whole bunch of clean water here. And the reason I want to do this now is because, like I said, I'm going to leave this sit now overnight. And uh, this way I'll be able to go ahead and do that while I'm off to work tonight. I'm just putting a bunch of water, excuse me, on the flamingo part that I want to be this pinky peach. And then I'm going to drop the color in to into the water. Let's see what happens here. It should be quite interesting. The paint is only going to go where you put the water. So I'm liking the color. What are you thinking? And I can see it's all right to leave white space. This paint is going to do its thing here. And it's going to dry while I am gone. Of course, I'm going to take a little peek at my inspiration again. If I can find it. And it's pink all the way up to the black beak. So I'm going to go all the way down here. Ooh, I'm liking it. I see here it's running off the edge a little bit. I'm just going to dab that up. Let me bring in a little bit. How's that? Better? And you can see how wet that is. That's really what I wanted. I wanted that paint to do what it needed to do. And I super love that. I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. 
move my paint. And then we're just going to add this area here, which is going to be these leaves. And I thought I would add them just like this in random bits so that we had a bunch of texture. Obviously, I want to be able to close my, <clears throat> my art journal, but it'll flatten out. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use these sticky sticky dots just like this so on this one I'm going to sticky dot in the back and I'm going to sticky dot in the front and I'm going to put it down and I'm going to leave the texture okay so I'm going to go ahead and do all of that I'm probably going to add a little brown to the edges and I'm going to do that with my spray um, Distress Oxide Spray in Vintage Photo because I love that color. And I'm going to do it now while um, everything is drying, okay? So it'll look a little bit different when we get together. This next time we will do our finishing details. We'll add our focal point and we'll see if we need to do anything from there, okay? I will see you tomorrow and for now all right thanks bye okay here's how it's looking i got a little sun coming through my light here so that's not really on there but it's just a sunspot but i'm loving how it's turned out look at all of that texture i popped them all up I will zoom in a little bit here so you can see a little better. How's that? Um, I did put some brown around the edge. I did put some brown around the branches here. Can you see that? I did do some brown splatters. I added the word, found words. I did the impredictable and imperfect and down here don't let your dreams be dreams I've got to give my flamingo a white eye to make that pop I'm using a correction pen I like to use that and I'll just go ahead and hopefully get that started so I'll give her the white eye, maybe. And then when that dries, I'll give the black center, right? Okay. So, um, I was talking about Creative Cove and how they uh, inspired me, how she inspired me. I believe her name is Michelle with this technique. Now, she took something round like this. This is just from uh, some tape. And she put black on there and she pushed it down and made bubbles. So, um, I'll, I'll do one since I got black paint here. But what I want to do is um, maybe make heart shape. So there's a bubble. I'll do a couple of bubbles. And she just took acrylic paint and she just went on the edge here and pulled the paint into the inside and don't worry about them being perfect she said because bubbles are not perfect right so look how cool that is huh I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit you need a little bit of water on these and I'm just using a wet towel here to dab off my brush don't worry about them being perfect. 
but my thought was something heart-shaped. I don't know why, because it's Valentine's Day, or it was Valentine's Day yesterday when I started this. Today I was at Walmart, and all their Valentine's stuff was half price, and I came about these little heart boxes. Well, if I can get paint on that edge, and I can make it a red bubble, woo, let's try it, shall we? Here's a little paint palette. Shake up my paint a little bit. Let's just try one. Oh, and this, this paint is kind of watery. We'll put it on our red shape, our heart shape, our red shape. Like that. And we'll use that one. See what happens. <gasps> now let's see if I can make it look like a heart bubble. Oh, yeah. It looks like a heart bubble. Oh, how neat. Now we're going to need a little bit of white. And I got white on my palette from yesterday. Just to give them a little highlight. Oh. So, you don't need mean to be so quiet. <laughs> Concentrating. Yay! I like that. And I like how it's transparent looking. Heart bubbles. Can you see? Oh. Okay, so I'm going to put bubbles all over this um, background. I'll do it off camera um, just to save some time. I hope you enjoyed this art journal page. I really did. I'm going to add some more black lines to my flamingo because it's dry now. So that will be fun. I'll do some little um, uh, details and I'll probably put a little bit of white on here too if I could get my yeah so I'll finish this up and you guys get out your art journal and let's get busy okay keep creating don't ever feel that you have nothing to do because there's so much out there isn't there so much out there that we can look up and be inspired by. So thank you, Michelle from Creative Cove. I'll link it below. I'll um, do some other linking. And please leave me a comment. I like comments. And I will try to be back next week. Again, I can't promise. You know, life happens. But I'm going to work in my journal. And if anyone would like a flip through of this journal, please let me know. We could definitely do that too. Okay, have fun. Keep creating. I'll finish this up and I'll put the pictures at the end. All right? Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.